If you've done any traveling across South America, then you know that it's almost impossible to avoid hearing about how good Peruvian food is. If this is the first time you're seeing us, we are Nicole and Miko, and we have spent the past seven months traveling around South America. And when we got to Peru, we decided to take it upon ourselves to answer the question, is the food in Peru as good as people say it is? In this video, we are gonna show you our experience of trying 10 of Peru's best foods. And along the way, we are gonna give them a rating of one to five llamas, because llamas felt like the most appropriate way to rate Peruvian food. Okay, so first up, ceviche. Ceviche is Peru's national dish, and I swear, like everyone who found out we were going to Peru, they were like, you gotta try the ceviche, you gotta try the ceviche. From around the world, they call it like Peruvian sushi because it is just raw seafood. The one I had was like the mix though, so it had extra things like shrimps and octopus, uh, but normally you just get chunks of seafood that's been marinating in like a lime lemon mixture. I guess that kind of what cooks it. And then there's chopped up cilantro, chopped up onions, a very interesting mix of lime, lemon juice, and fish. If you've never had ceviche before, that's probably the first thing you're gonna experience is just like that wave of like citrusy lime juice. I really, it's a shame that I don't like seafood. If you don't like seafood, I like me, I think you're really missing out, especially in Luna, but whatever. Out of five llamas, how would you rate your ceviche? I've tried ceviche in other parts of South America. Mm -hmm. I think Peruvian ceviche is the best, <sighs> but I wouldn't say it's like my number one, you know, Peruvian food. I'd probably maybe give it like a four llamas out of five llamas. I mean, it's still pretty good. But I think there's a couple other dishes I'd probably look at first if I'm ordering at like a Peruvian restaurant. Okay, and that will bring us to Lomo Salpado, which is the second food item on our list. One of the super classic things to eat in Peru. Lomo Salpado really reminds me of stir fry. Um, I remember saying that when we first tried it in Lima. And I think when we did a little bit of research on it, we learned that Lomo Salpado was really created when there was a lot of Chinese immigration into Peru. So it really is kind of like this mix of like Peruvian and Chinese cuisine. It's like marinated sirloin meat that's like chopped, small and fine, kind of like you would for a stir fry. Onions, tomato, and it seems to always be served with rice. What's also awesome about Lomo Salpado is that you can get it like anywhere in Peru. If you're not into like being adventurous and trying out like different types of foreign exotic Peruvian cuisine, you can just get Lomo Saltado. I'm gonna go with three and a half llamas, I think. I think with super high quality beef, that could easily jump to a five. We're, we come from a place in Canada that just has the most incredible beef and so my like, my beef mark is real high. So three and a half llamas for me. But similar to Lomo Saltado, our next one also has a lot of Chinese influence. And the next one is not really a food, but almost like a, a branch of food called chifa. So you'll find the word chifa everywhere you go in Peru. You'll see different types of chifa restaurants. Yeah. Nicole mentioned earlier, back in the day, there was a lot of Chinese immigration into Peru. Yeah. And their like techniques and their cooking and their flavors have actually combined with Peruvian uh, cooking techniques and flavors. It is so good. It's, it really is like a branch of Peruvian food that yeah. is very Chinese. It very much feels like Chinese food. We tried a couple. Mm. I think one of the ones that we got in Kano was chow pha, a dish called yeah. chow pha. A roast chow, chow pha. Wow. <laughs> which is like their typical fried rice with like fried rice, you know, with your eggs and I think they're chopped up green onion and then like some beef chunks like con carne or con pollo. Mm -hmm. um, that is a very normal meal. Yeah. I suggest you try at least a Ross Chalfa when you're in Peru. And it's so affordable. If you need yeah. a cheap meal, chifa. Chifa. Oh my God, so good. Also, if you're just kind of tired of like your typical Peruvian food or like Western food and just want to try something completely different, go to a chifa restaurant. And you still feel like you're eating like local Peruvian food, which yeah. is really yeah, nice. Yeah, that's the funniest when, part. Yeah, we didn't feel like we were like cheaping out, you know, and buying like pizza or spaghetti or something in Peru. We were like, no, this is still Peruvian, which yeah, is super yeah. cool. So, out of five llamas, it gets five llamas. I think I think a five. Yeah, you yeah, too. Yeah, okay. So good. So the next dish may surprise some people because when you think of Peru, people usually think of like llamas and alpacas and things like that. Mm, cute but, animals. Cute animals. But when you go to Peru, you will think of now a different animal, <laughs> especially if you're for perusing the uh, Peruvian cuisine. Mm. And that is kue, AKA guinea pig. So that was one of the biggest I wanna say surprises because we knew that they eat guinea pig in Peru, mm -hmm. but it's still just like a little bit jarring to see a kind of fried guinea pig on like the street side stalls. Yeah, and I mean, I guess it's just because that's, you know, as people from North America, guinea pig 
like they're pets. It's a cute little pet. Yeah, they're furry little adorable creatures that just live in people's houses. We're pretty sure it's actually pronounced like Kui? 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 We don't really know. <laughs> I guess it's it's named after the sound a guinea pig makes. Oh, so, it is? Yeah, so I've never had it. I've never owned a guinea pig. Oh, that's so weird to me. <laughs> So yeah, okay. that's that's a yeah, and it's 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 obviously like totally like normal in Peru. Absolutely, it's part of their tradition. It's yeah. part of their heritage. It's very, it's honestly such an important food from what we learned. I guess um, it was very important originally in like the Andes parts of Peru. It has been eaten there for like more than five thousand years. Our guide for we did this Alcante trek up to Machu Picchu, and I remember him saying that for his birthday. Yeah, yeah, oh, he asks he gets guinea pig every year for his birthday. Like it's a really important and special dish. So, anyways. Totally normal, obviously. We went to Peru, we had to try guinea pig. It looks like chicken, like you yeah. know, you got a drumstick and thigh and all that and kind of stuff. Fried. Like, and it's fried, like it it's, looks it's, like fried chicken. It looks like fried chicken, yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, but it doesn't taste anything like chicken, I, I, I think. I remember you saying that it was kind of like the dark meat of chicken, but like lighter. As in like like the, the texture of meat that you get out of like a duck. Was yeah. the word I think that you used. You know, it was good the first few bites, but then it kind of weirded me out. It's because it, it like kind of feel like it should taste like chicken because it kind of looks like chicken. Yeah. And then it started to kind of drift away from the thought of chicken <laughs> and it felt like I was really eating like this right. little guinea pig thingy. I don't think I could eat that. It was just a little too, <laughs> a little too familiar looking for me. <laughs> Honestly, Great food if you want to try something new and exotic. Highly recommend yeah. it. Personally, I'm gonna give it like one and a half lines. Really? Maybe two. Yeah. Ooh, I'm sorry if you're Peruvian. That was harsh. In terms of personal taste, if you love it, have a. You know, it's all yours. <laughs> but I think for like experience, like a cultural experience, that to me is very cool. Like I love that we got to try a very classic Peruvian dish. So. Even though I had one bite and then couldn't have any more, I would actually probably give it more like two or three stars just because of the experience. All right, this brings us to picarones. It is a donut. Honestly, I think it's probably the best way to describe it, but it is made out of like squash or sweet potato, which makes you feel like it's healthy. You get it in like a container, at least if you buy it as street food, and you give in like a container of syrup, syrup yeah. yeah, to go with it. And I don't know if you're supposed to just like pour the syrup over the whole thing or dip the bite in the syrup, I don't know, whatever. Put the syrup on it somehow, that's okay. Um, and it's delicious. Super great choice and really inexpensive. Wow. Probably give it maybe like three. I go three and a half. I'm yeah. back to the half llamas. Yeah. I go three and a half llamas. I think it's a really nice uh, place to start if you're interested in street food in mm -hmm. Peru yeah. because it's all deep fried. So like yeah, you feel really safe. Can't really it. go wrong. Yeah, that's Unless the true. inside's undercooked, maybe. I so mean, we didn't get sick. <laughs> it's <very good>. fine. <laughs> okay, so next up we have aji de gallina, which is like a chicken stew. I think is how it's kind of like described online when we were to, when we looked it up. So it's like shredded chicken in aji sauce, which is very common all across Peru. You can get aji sauce everywhere, and it's served with rice. It is. So good. Oh, it's so good. This was one of my favorite dishes I think, yeah. that we had. Um, when it came out, I remember thinking that it looked like curry. Yeah. Like, I thought it was like curry and rice or something. Yeah, like it looks like curry and rice to me at least, just because that's what I'm familiar with. It honestly looked like yellow curry. And I was really expecting it to be spicy because it looked like curry and it was not spicy at all. In yeah. fact, I'd say it was almost sweet. sweet. Yeah. yeah. So if I were to go off like one single bite, I would also give it a five. Personally, I like to have meals with variety because otherwise I actually get kind of sick of eating like the same food. So I would probably end up with like four, four and a half star, not stars, llamas. <laughs> because I loved it, but it's just like after a whole plate of it, you're like, okay, I'm kind of done with a little bit. So the next one, if you're looking for variety, you can get that easily at any kind of Peruvian food market. Mm -hmm. And what they normally serve at these food markets are almuerzos, which translates basically like lunch. Yeah, it's just a Spanish word for lunch. So you go in there, you'll find all these stalls of like different like mini kitchens, mm -hmm. each like operated by what seems to be just like a different family. True. So almuerzo isn't actually like a specific dish. It's more like a type of dish. Yeah. It's lunch, it translates to lunch. But it is truly like, usually it comes with a soup to start. Right. And then you get a plate of food. And the plate is really what you choose. So you usually have on the menu a couple of different options for what your main plate is. So you choose which um, where's it, which lunch like main dish you want. And then you usually get a juice with it. Yeah. Oftentimes you get a juice with it. And it's incredibly local. So um, it's an experience. It is, a, it is an experience. If you're not used to eating at like a food market, especially 
in South America, mm -hmm. definitely try to order yourself an onboard. So. Yeah, this is a moment to just like embrace your travel experience and just go for it. You're not really sure what you're gonna end up eating. Maybe you like it, hopefully you will. Um, but you're gonna be served with love. You're gonna have a cool experience with like yeah. surrounded by other local people. Gosh, it's really hard to tease apart like the experience from the food to me. Because the food, I would probably rate usually around like a three and a half lomas. But if you take into account, I think like the experience, then again, it's a five. Because yeah, I'm like, this is super cool. It's like an activity. It truly is something as travelers that we would like go to do to actually have the cultural experience. Have an alert. Okay, so a food that we tried in Peru that seemed really different from anything else we had already tried there was papa relleno, and then mm -hmm. I also had rocoto relleno, mm -hmm. and they were similar but very different also. So papa relleno is like this potato, like it's like a potato casing that was stuffed full of minced like ground beef with like different vegetables and spices and deliciousness. And then ricotto relleno was very similar, but it actually was a pepper, like a hot pepper, that had then been stuffed with this delicious combination of minced meat and um, vegetables and spices. And then also like baked in some sort of bread casing. It really reminded me of shepherd's pie. Yeah, it's kind of like an all-in-one package. Yes, yeah. yeah. They're super cute and like just beautiful to look at. Anyways, highly recommend. For me, I would say four and a half stars. No nope, llamas. <laughs> Who made up the scale? So the next one is a little bit, it might throw some people off. It's anticuchos. So anticucho is like skewered meat, but the meat that they use is usually beef heart. Some people might have a hard time getting over that. Um, like the cold. <laughs> I tried it, just you know, it's a traditional food, yeah. very important to Peruvian culture. Yeah. It was good. It was like a little bit um, squishy. Chewy. Chewy. I, yeah. well, I tried a bite and we were both like, ooh, it's so chewy. A little chewy. It definitely has a distinct like mm -hmm. organ, organ taste. taste. <laughs> I would agree with you there. It's good. Try it if you're interested in that, yeah. if you're like into organs. <laughs> <laughs> but it probably wouldn't be the first thing you try. I, I wouldn't, yeah, yeah, don't make it the first thing. Out of five llamas? Uh, I'm gonna go with like two yeah. and a half. Yeah. yeah, I go with like two as well. Yeah. I think it's like one of those flavors that once you've had it, a li just a little bit of it, it's like enough. Yeah. So this last item is not a food, but we put it on the list anyway because it's so important to Peru. It is a pisco salad. Pisco is a spirit. It's its own spirit. To me, it tastes, I'd say, a little like gin, a little like rum. The pisco is composed of pisco, the spirit, egg white, and lemon. Yeah, okay? and, and it's served like a cocktail. Yeah, served as a cocktail. You can get also like pisco with so much other stuff. Like you can have it in so many different varieties, but the traditional pisco sour is made up of those three ingredients. Pisco is a whole thing in Peru, so if you get, if you get a chance to try a pisco, um, pisco sour is a great start. So out of five llamas. Oh, I think I'm gonna go for a five. Yeah, I think I'd go with five. It's well. like definitely, they lead to good times. Yeah. It, it's great. <laughs> okay, that's all 10 foods. Yeah. So now that we are at this part of the video, we are gonna answer the question, do we think Peruvian food is all it's cracked up to be? Well, we've been to Argentina. We've tried their food in Chile. Yeah. Ecuador and Bolivia. And we're actually already in Colombia. And already in Colombia. Those videos are coming next. We've had lots of Colombian food. Uh, when we weigh that against Peruvian food. Oh, you're going to weigh it against the other countries? Uh, you know, I, I am going to say Peruvian yeah. food is like number one. Yeah, definitely what sets Peru apart is just the diversity of flavor you can get. And I think part of that is also because of the different regions and like terrains they have in Peru as yeah. well. Because of course you've got the coast, you've got the sea. Um, and then you have high Andes mountains and that is a whole other cuisine. I 100% agree that Peruvian food is absolutely incredible cuisine. It is all it's cracked up to be. It lives up to its name. It lives up to its name. And it is, uh, to me, it, like Peruvian food could be a whole reason that you visit Peru. Just go oh, yeah. taste the food. Full gastronomic tour. And, you know, go to Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu but and all that stuff. Eat, eat the food. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely eat the food. So we hope you enjoyed this video. I don't know about you guys, but I am feeling very hungry now after talking about all this food. We finished our coffee, now we need more food.
Yeah. Uh, if you like this video, uh, give it a like. And if you want to see more of us, uh, consider subscribing. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got lots of great content coming up. We do. Columbia's coming. That's where we are right now. And we have got awesome content from Columbia coming up. This is a wonderful, wonderful country. Uh, but we've got lots of videos on Peru too. So yeah. if you are headed into Peru soon and you want to kind of check out what Peru is all about, we'll link the playlist as well so you can click that. And we'll catch you in the next one. All right. Thanks for watching.